Hello everybody, JC here from JC Inspired. How are you guys all doing? So I hope you guys are doing great. Um, I promised you guys I was going to do a succeeding video where we'll be talking about the parent process ID. Well, here it is. And um, if you haven't seen the first one, there should be a card right now popping up in this video to redirect you there. And um, if you're already savvy with the, um, the process ID, you could just join along. And I'm also going to be introducing the FLRK, the Fox system call in this video. So it sure promises to be an exciting one. I'm excited to share my knowledge with you. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right, guys. So um, prior to this time, we created this executable, which you see in the previous video. Um, this add and then we created instances of this executable and each instance was called a process. Now, we want to talk about the parent process and by definition, the parent process is just simply the process that creates a child process. So a man becomes a father when he gives birth to a child, a process becomes a parent process or a father process when you're able to create another process from it. Um, the parent process identifier on the other hand is simply the unique identifier of that parent process. All right, so how do we get the parent process? We simply get it using this function, get PPID. So PPID right here stands for Parent Process ID. That's what it actually stands for. So let me just share what I mean right now from the function which you wrote in our previous video. So I'm going to open up this function add.c right now. Okay, guys, so I'm currently in my function. And um, I just want to repeat something like what I did previously, but this time around, instead of using PID, I'm going to be using PPID. So I'm going to come right here and change this variable to PPID instead. Sorry about that. So PPID. Um, next, I'm going to come down right here to change this from get PID to get PPID. So I'm also going to change this variable name to PPID. All right, so this would also be my PPID is this. And this would also be PPID. All right, so everything looks good for now. So I'm going to save this right now. And I'm going to run this. So GCC add, let's see, O add. All right, so now I'm running it. Now look at the answer I'm getting. I'm getting my PPID is 7198. I want you to take note of this. So it says my PPID is 7198. If I run um, this, um, if I execute this pro this program again, what do you think would be the value of my PPID? Would it change as it was changing when I was executing um, the program for my process? Would it change? So let's just see that right now. So I'm going to execute it one more time. Oh, it still says my PPID is 7198. Okay, let's try one more time. Oh, my PPID is 7198. So why isn't it changing? All right, so the first thing we've been able to spot out is that no matter how much I execute uh, my program, no matter how many processes I create with the program, the parent doesn't change. All right, let's try something else with this function, subtract.c. So I'm going to open it up right now. So right now, I've done exactly the same thing which I did in the previous function. I um, just declared a variable right here, PPID, and I'm also getting the parent process ID of this function of this process okay so exactly the same thing i did in the add function now what was going to happen i'm going to compile this gcc subtract o subtract just like that so um prior to this time when we ran the previous um process we realized that for every time we executed that program the ppid was i think it was 7198 if I'm not mistaken, okay, 7198. So right now, let me execute this and then take note of what's going to happen. So I'm going to do subtract. Realize it says my PPID is 7198. Wow. Let me execute it again. What's happening? My PPID is 7198. So you also realize that when I um, create instances of this subtract executable of this program, the PPID remains constant. Okay, so 
right now if you haven't figured it out yet i'm sure you should be asking yourself so why is that so when i executed the add function you realize that the ppid did not change when i executed the difference function the ppid also did not change one thing we can infer from that result is this for them to have the same ppid the implication is that they have the same parents all right so for them to have the same ppid it shows that they have the same parent so why is that it's because right now the parent of everything you execute on this terminal is the instance of the shell program that is running so remember we're talking about building our own shell so currently this command line you see right here and the cursor that has the ability to receive input from your keyboard from your standard input this thing you're seeing right here is actually a program that is executed is actually a process or an instance of the shell program that is inside your terminal all right so anything you run therefore on this terminal so if i run add for example add was you know was executed on this shell program if i run subtract from here subtract was also executed from this shell program because it's the shell program that literally takes in your input and then communicates with your operating system and gives you back an output so anything you run on the shell program or the instance of the shell program is a child of the shell program so that's why they all have the same um parents process id and um let me just show you guys a quick a quick um checker something like you always use to check the parent process id of the current instance of your shell program is this command echo and i'm going to do echo dollar dollar so what this basically does is that it helps us display the the um the id of the current instance of the shell program that is running in our terminal so i'm going to hit enter you realize that it is also 7198 because it's the process id of the current instance of the shell any program i run on this shell would have this um the parent process id to be 7198 because it was created from the shell so basically that's how this works so there you have it the basics of the pid and the ppid okay so i was hoping i'll be able to complete the fork um, system call in this video but um because of time constraint i'm not going to do that i'm going to push it to a next one but not to worry if you understand this i believe that you're one step closer in my opinion to understand the frog system call and if you still can't see how all these things all fit together don't worry by the time we begin to create our own processes you're going to see how all these things work together and fit together so for now just play around with this you know make the functions your own play around with them and then um, when we come next time you're going to see how all these things fit together if you're new here also let me just remind you you might want to subscribe so that you keep up to date with the videos that will be coming up and um, if you like the video like it if you want to share it if you have people that would love such content you know go ahead you know share it and i'll see you in the next one